Cool, so we are going live and it seems I'm live. So this is what uh, YouTube says I'm live and that's awesome. So I can see a lot of people already joined this live session. Uh, yes, I'm going to share the mental link soon. Uh, oh, it's, it is not mentioned in the description. Uh, let me just do that quickly. So just give me a second, everyone. I will add this code description uh, in the description itself so that you can access it easily. Okay, so today we, the topic is arrays. We'll talk about the topic, but before that, we have to start with the menti, right? That's very important. So we'll start the uh, we'll start the session with menti, and then we'll move towards the top main topic. And again, as we did last time, we are going to start with uh, four uh, four questions on menti, and then remaining four later. So I'm sharing the link for the menti meter in the description. I hope it will be visible now. Please check the description for the mental link. And also I'm sharing the link in the chat in case if you missed. Okay. Now what about the assignment? Uh, I will be announcing the winner tomorrow. Uh, we have, uh, so we got a lot of uh, registration. In fact, we got a lot of submissions on assignment, which we did, uh, which, which, which I've given you on Friday. So it was a coding assignment. You, you were supposed to print Telesco and I need on uh, in, in star format and you did well. Uh, I got a lot of uh, submission and that's why it will take some time for the uh, verification. Uh, we have already filtered few of them. Uh, again, out of out of uh, all the selected, we want to select only one and you will get the prize. So maybe tomorrow we'll, assign, we'll announce the winner for that. Okay, uh, so for today, uh, The voice is low. Oh, that's weird. It's good, right? The voice is good. Danush, say, Danush says, Legend Navin Reddy is back again. Yeah, I'm back. I'm active now. So. Okay, so everyone, uh, I hope you're excited. This is our fifth session on Kojava uh, live sessions. And again, we'll start with the Menti. So I hope you're all set. I'm going to share my screen where I'm going to show you the Menti meter. And well, this will be a fun game. But today we have a different prize. We don't have a cash prize today because not everything is done with cash, right? So we have to do uh, some other stuff as well. Cool. So I'm sharing my Menti meter screen and you can use this code to join the Menti meter, everyone. Okay, so what's the Menti code? So either you can use a link which is mentioned in the chat or you can use a link which is mentioned in the description or you can you, you can go to menti.com and you can enter that code. In fact, I wanted to talk about the uh, terms first, but before that, if you want to join, this is a screen where you can join this Mentimeter. So if you want to join Mentimeter, it's very simple. Just uh, scan the QR code which is mentioned there or you can mention this code. I don't know if it is code visible to you. So the code is 2696767. Yeah, and the Mentimeter is based on uh, Yeah, so today Mentimeter is based on the topic which we did last time. In fact, it is based on the entire week. Uh, there are 80% questions on loops and then 20% questions are there from the uh, topics we have done. Okay, so yeah, uh, so, okay, this is this is the code. You can scan this code from mobile phone and you can join. In fact, there's one more thing. Uh, I want to talk about the terms as well and the uh, prizes for today. So this is Java quiz. Uh, the first prize winner will get uh, the full stack Java course, in fact, Java full stack live course, which is coming next month, uh, 9th July. And also I'm coming up with this blockchain development live course, uh, public blockchain basically. So this will be coming from 16th of July and this, both these courses are live courses, six months live courses. So winner will get the free access to it. Okay. Uh, second prize winner will, winner will only get the blockchain course, not the Java course. And because Java course is almost full. So, uh, 
So we are just launching blockchain so that you can join that. Third prize winner will get 50% off for uh, Java course. Okay, in fact, uh, by the time you join, I wanted to talk about the courses as well. What, let me just do one thing here. Okay, the courses which I was talking about is this course. So this is what you will win if you win this. So this is the Enterprise Java with Spring Boot. Uh, this course is coming on 9th of July. And you will find the link in the chat. So in the chat, uh, the pinned chat is, has two, two different links. One is for Java and one is for blockchain. Uh, this is a course which we are launching. Uh, I will be the trainer for this. I will, be, I will be one of the lead trainer for this. We are going to cover Core Java. Then, uh, oops, concept again. This is there in the live course as well. The most important part is it covers the enterprise concepts of Java. You know, Hibernate, Servlet, uh, Spring Boot. Then we have most amazing, we are going to cover Agile concepts, Docker, and microservices. Okay. Cool. So this is the course, and this is the course timing. And this is the course date launch. This is 9 July. We are going to launch this course. Again, as I mentioned, this, we have a limited seats available for this particular course. But then recently we have also launched the blockchain course. You can uh, go for this one as well. So this is what you will be getting if you win the first and second winner. So basically this covers the entire blockchain. You know, it, it has everything. JavaScript, Node.js, blockchain, Solidity, Ethereum. Uh, I mean, just name any blockchain, public blockchain, it is it should be there. We are also going to cover Polygon, which is Matic, and then uh, Polkadot, and then the graph as well. Okay. Yeah, so this is the, so you will, you will get the access for these links in the chat on top. Okay. So I hope you have joined the Menti. Again, I'm sharing the link for the Menti. It is available there. And it's time to get started with the quiz. Okay, what's the last date for enroll? That's the question from Nagesh. Uh, the date is, in fact, it's a, the number of seats available. Uh, for Java, we have limited seats available. When the moment we got batch full, uh, the registration will close. For blockchain, the enrollment just started, so you can join anytime. Okay. So that says exactly for the first prize. That's right. You will get access for both the courses. Okay. Madan says how, uh, for blockchain, how many months? Six months course. It's a six months live course. Uh, Gaurav is asking, are there any prerequisite for the blockchain course? No prerequisite. We are going to start from base. Even if you don't know anything about web development as well, you'll, you will learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript in the batch itself. So there's no required, uh, there's no prerequisite. Yeah, you should know how to use computer, that's it. How to open the browser, uh, English language a bit. Okay, Jagdish says, all, have already en enrolled. That's awesome. See you in the course, Jagdish. Okay, so I hope you have joined this Menti. Uh, we are going to start with the first question. Uh, and here we go. So five, four, in fact, we don't have a question. We will be doing the, oh, some people want to join the Menti now. Okay, so if you want to join the Menti, it's very simple. You can, you can scan the QR code and you can also go to menti.com and you can mention the code. So I'm waiting on this screen for 10 seconds. You can join fast. Okay, there are some questions for blockchain course. Uh, will there be class clash between Java and blockchain? No, they're on two different timing. Uh, they're on the same date, Saturday and Sunday, but then uh, for uh, Java is in the morning, 9 to 12, and blockchain is in the afternoon, 3 to 6. For the prerequisite, yeah, I have answered that. Prerequisite for blockchain, there's no prerequisite. You should know how to use computer, that's it. Yeah, got up. I, have, I guess I have answered it. There's no clash of the timing between two, these two batches. 
Okay, so I guess most of you have joined the Menti, uh, and now it's time for time to start this game. Here we go. So the first question is, are you a subscriber? This is not a quiz, actually. This is just, I wanted to know how many people, when they watch this uh, video, are they subscribed? Because some people don't subscribe, right? They just watch the video. So if you have already subscribed, say yes. If you, uh, if you don't want to subscribe, you can say no. If you're planning to subscribe, you can say planning to be. But make sure that you do that after this session, or maybe now also you can do that. Or maybe you can just click on the subscribe now channel, and then you can uh, click on yes. Even that works. There's a question from Sanu. What is a blockchain course? Oh, I should make a different video on this, right? So don't worry, I, in the next two days, I'm going to publish a video on this blockchain, what exactly blockchain is and what this course will teach you and all, all those stuff. Prakash says, I want to join from Texas. Yeah, you can join. You can join from any place. In case if you're not able to attend the live classes, the recording will be available. Yes, we should. It will be like you will be having lifetime access for the recorded, recorded uh, recordings. Okay, not an issue. So majority of you are a subscriber. Few of them, few of you are not uh, not a subscriber. That's okay. Okay. Uh, so you still want Menti link? Let me just paste it once again in the chat. So I'm pasting the Menti link here, and you can join. Okay, so I'm starting with the next question. I can see a lot of people have already joined. Let's go with the question. Oh, ignore this one. This is not, I was supposed to delete this question. Why well, it's here. No, don't answer this. It was just the old slide. Here we go. We are starting with the quiz. Please enter your own name, which, uh, which matches with your email ID so that I can give you the access for the courses. Awesome. Okay, so I guess everyone is here. And now the first question, everyone, coming on your screen. And here we go. So the first question, everyone, which among the following is a valid loop name in Java? For loop, while loop, do while loop, all. Okay, 600 people already voted for this. Okay, uh, the count is going up. Is it 700? Closing to 700? Come on, you can do it. Three, two, one, time up. And the answer is, it's all. Everything is valid, valid right? So in Java, we have for loop as well. We have while loop, we have do while loop. So it's all, basically. Okay. So now, okay, Koda says didn't even read, read the rest of the options. That's why, you know, don't hurry. Of course, giving the question, giving the right answer, giving it fast is important, but make sure that it is right. Okay, now the second question, everyone, coming on your screen. Choose the correct syntax of while loop in Java below. Okay, so choose the appropriate answer. Maybe everything is right here. Maybe it will not give you compile time errors, but choose the appropriate one. Which one you will use when you want, you have when you have an intention of using a while loop. Okay, let's see what you are going to answer here. Okay, majority of you are going for the first option and that is correct. And the beauty is 700 people are playing this still. You know, this is fifth session of Java. Normally what happens, you know, whenever you start a new course, whenever you uh, join this, at the start, a lot of people are excited, but day by day, the, the count goes down drastically. But this this time, you know, it's not going down. We started with 1,000, we are still on 700. Uh, we are doing a good job, everyone. Keep it up. Okay, uh, good job. So now it's time to see the leaderboard for the first two questions. Do we have any new entries? And I can still see Prachi Agrawal, in the top 10, Manish is also there. But this time we got the fastest person, Raja Varun, I guess is a new entry. Uh, we got Shalini, Anmol, Anmol was there in the last session as well.
good job so there are few few people they are coming on top top 10 every time but then we got new entries good to see that okay then now we have okay where is amit good question where is amit <laughs> this time we don't have amit playing this oh cool okay third question everyone coming on your screen here we go okay what is the output of the below java program okay don't be in a hurry understand the question properly and then choose the answer you still have 10 seconds more but 400 people already voted for this okay and here we go so we got 700 votes and majority of you are saying one two three and that is correct now why we got this answer why not one two three four is because if you can see the loop is not running till four it's less than four right good job okay so if you if you still want to join menti if you are new to this session just go to menti.com and mention this code which is mentioned here in fact uh, let me just type paste the uh, menti link once again okay good job so we have done with three questions and now it's time for the fourth question again after this question we are going to start with java uh, session uh, the concept and then we'll come back to menti after this session so the fourth question everyone coming on your screen here we go in java a character literal is enclosed within a pair of so do we use a square bracket do we use a single quote do we use a double quote or none of this what do you think? Okay, majority of you already answered this in 10 seconds, less than 10 seconds. But is it right? That's the main question. Okay. So 700 people already voted. Awesome. So majority of you are saying single code and that is correct. So basically whenever you work with characters in Java, we use single code. Yes, in different languages, we use also use single code for string. But in Java specifically, you have to remember, whenever you are working with a string, use double quotes. Whenever you work with a single character, use single quote. So when you say character uh, character literal, it's one single character, use single quote for that. Awesome. Now with this, we have done with the first four question. And I guess there should be a leaderboard after this. Yeah, there's a leaderboard. And now let's see who did well in this round. Okay, Raja Varun is still, I guess, still on top. Oh, that's great. So Raja Varun is on top. Then we got Shalini, we got Anmol, and look at the look at the score this time. It's almost close. There's a difference of microseconds between all these people. Oh, this is crazy. So maybe you got a fast internet, everyone. Maybe you just got a geo fiber just to win this quiz. Good job, everyone. Uh, the remaining four questions will do it after the session because today's session is very important. We are going to talk about arrays. Okay, one of my favorite topics. So let's go back to my face so that I can just close this menti for time being. And where do I do this? Minimize. Keep it away. So menti goes on second screen. You can't see menti anymore. And now you can see my screen. Okay, so basically this is what we are using. We are using IntelliJ IDEA and my notes as well. And I hope you are able to access all the notes. Now, one of the questions you had is, how do we upload the assignments? So maybe after the session, I will show you how do you upload the assignments on the portal so that next time you can do it easily. Okay, and yeah. Assignment answer, yes, I'm going to share that by tomorrow. I will choose one of the best answer. See that the one of the, one of the way I'm choosing the best answer is not how efficient your code is or how structured you have written the code because some of you have actually returned the code in a very good way using different classes using different methods and it looks beautiful to look but then think about this we are i'm teaching you java from the from the base right so use only those features which we have taught in the classes uh, we have not talked about class and methods yet so use normal class use normal methods and i mean main method and do the code and so we actually have actually chosen the top of five codes based on uh, the, those criteria. Okay, how to get the notes? Uh, you can access the dashboard. So you can see in the chat, uh, in the description, there's a dashboard link available. So you go to the dashboard and all the notes and videos are available there. 
okay so basically what's the topic for today so topic for today is very simple it's the topic is array okay now but basically why do we need an array now think about this whenever you work with variables whenever you work with data of course right in the real world we always work with data so when you have a data you basically store that in a box right so this is your box and this is where you store data let's say six is your data or maybe you have a different data you have a different box and the data you want to store there is let's say uh name so i should be having a bigger box right so let's say we have one more box and in this you want to store a name so let's say the name is Naveen so what happens is for every data for every type of data you have a different variable but sometimes you know what happens when you have collection of data you have multiple data you want to keep it together in one particular box so example I have a number uh, I have different values here so let's, let's say the value is five six nine two three I have this number I want to store that in one variable is it really possible to store multiple values in one variable uh yeah there is a way okay so people are saying my voice is low today is it my voice low uh, that's weird maybe i don't have that much of energy today uh, compared to last week because i'm not that well today but yeah it's good right okay i don't know what went wrong there uh, video is not clear i can see healthy connection here maybe you can check your internet or you can set the uh, settings there okay so just to reiterate what we have done so basically we are talking about arrays today so instead of storing one variable in one box or one value in one variable can we store all this variable once in one particular variable so in that case if you want to achieve this if you want to store all this value in one variable we can use a concept of arrays now what array says is it will give you a block which you can use it will give you the block here which you can use and in this block you can store the values uh, you know normally what i do is when i want to take this example normally i take the example of uh, i don't know if you have seen my java videos you can use a chat window there uh, to mention the uh, example which i take for the for the arrays so just to reiterate for everyone here on YouTube, and my, my wife loves that example. No? <laughs> okay. So let's say you have, uh, so let's say you want to give a, a, a tea or coffee to someone. What you will do is you will take a, you will carry that in a cup, right? You don't actually carry the tea in your hand. So basically you will carry a cup. In that cup, you will be having a tea or a coffee, right? You will, you can, you, you will serve it to your guest. But what if you have multiple guests now? So let's say they are sitting, sitting in a hallway or they're sitting in the hall on your sofa. And then now there are four to five guests. You are coming out of your kitchen and you got, let's say, five cups, which you want to carry to the hall. Now, there are multiple ways you can do that. Right? You can carry one cup at a time, right? You can just go to the kitchen, take one cup, go to the hall, give it, you know, you can give the cup to the one guest, go back to the kitchen, second, uh, second cup, second guest, go back to the kitchen. The same thing you can do multiple times, right? Or... You can use two hands, right? At, the, at one time, you can carry two cups. We have a better way of doing that, right? Uh, I don't know if you ever had a tea in the local store or local chaiwala, what they do. They use all five fingers and they dip in five cups, right? Or five glasses and they serve, right? That's one way. Or one of the best way you can do is you can use a tray, which we use, which we have at home. So basically you get a tray, right? So in that tray, you carry those cups. So basically array, is that tray for you so basically if you want to carry the cup you can use array to carry to use it so one tray can uh, can have multiple cups yeah that's right uh, silver fang it's you you can just dip your fingers in those cups okay cool so basically you can just have the values in this array right so what values you have here so let's say the values are five six nine two and three so basically you have one big array which will have multiple values okay now amit says uh, tasty tea that's right that's that's how you get the taste right yeah that's right uh, shahid it's so tray is your array here and all these values are different cups in fact those are the those are tea in a in a particular variable in a box and yes those things which we call them as elements that's right Okay, so basically we have a we have an array and each value will be called as an element. Now, how do we access them? So if you want to access this particular array, what you have to do is every array 
will have a number to it. So every array will have a number to it. So the number for this is, example, if you want to fetch five, or maybe we have to also give a name to it, right? So let's say the name of this array is nums. So basically, instead of having one num variable, we have nums variable, which will have all these values. Now, how will you fetch this value? So basically, every element here will have an index number. So the index number starts with zero. Then it goes for one, two, three, four. Now you might be saying, hey, why do we start with zero? Normally index numbers should start with one, right? Uh, but then index numbers normally start with zero. The reason for this is the entire numbering system actually starts with zero. The whole number, right? It starts with zero, one, two. But yes, humans normally prefer to call them with numbers, integer numbers. Uh, or what do you say, natural numbers, but then the whole number system is very famous in the world of computer because it will store, it will save a bit for you. Example, binary format, 0 and 1. Then we got uh, octal format, 0 to 7. We got decimal format, 0 to 9. So if you, the, so normally all the systems start with 0, right? And that's why arrays, index numbers, starts with 0. So if you want to fetch this element, which is 9, in this case, you can say, hey, I want to fetch value from nums and the index I want to refer to is 2. So when you say nums of 2, the value which you will receive is 9. Okay, that's how it works. So basically you have to remember it works with the index numbers. There's a question from Vishnu Kalyan, I guess the quiz ended. No, we have done with the first half of quiz. Uh, so basically we are done with the uh, first half. Yeah, second half is remaining which we'll do after the session. Okay, Atif says, great explanation, we'll never forget why we need arrays in programming, that's right, to carry cups. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't have to dip your fingers in the cups. Anyway, so let's go back to the code. What I want to do is, I want to create an array here. Now, how do we create an array? It's very simple. You want to save number of values, you can say nums equal to. Now, there are multiple ways of doing this. One way is you can use curly brackets to hold all the values. So use the curly bracket and mention all the values here. But then this nums should also have a type to it, right? So since we are storing numbers, I can say this is my int array. So this array here is of int type. But you have to also mention that this is not a normal variable. This is a array. In that case, you have to give a square bracket. So how do we define that it's an array? You have to give a square bracket. And then if you want to assign values to those square bracket, I mean this nums, you can put that in a curly bracket. So the, what are the values we have? We have 5, 6, 9, 2, and 3. That's it. We got this array which has 5 values, right? Now, how will you fetch these values? It's very simple. Let's say I want to print the entire array. In fact, you can't do that. We'll see that. So let's say if you try to print the array. Now, this is where we are going to introduce a new concept. Again, we'll not discuss that new concept today, but just to give you the name. Basically, when you talk about the primitive data types, which we have talked about int, float, and all those stuff, those things works well. But then if you want to go beyond that, if you want to store any complex data, it normally called as objects, okay? So here, this array is not a primitive type here, it's an object. But again, what is object that we'll see later. And that's why if you try to run this code, you can see it will be, oh, there's an error. No, the code is already running. So you can see that we got some weird number or some, some text here. Again, we'll discuss why we got this particular string here. Okay, so yeah, we'll talk about this, why we got this weird number, what is this I here, what is, I mean, why we got this square bracket, why we got added it, it has a special meaning to it. We'll discuss, the, this, we'll discuss about that later. As of now, what's important is we are trying to print nums, which will not work. So if you want to print the value, let's say I want to print this nine here, you have to provide the index value. So the index value for this is you have to provide a square bracket and say, I want the index value two. So nums of index two will give you nine. Let's run this code and you can see we got nine. Okay, programmer says it's a garbage value. No, it's not a garbage value. It has a special meaning to it, which we'll discuss later. In Java, basically, we don't deal with garbage garbage values because in Java, we have a concept of garbage collection. Yeah, we'll, we're going to discuss that as well later. Okay. Uh... 
Okay, so basically we got this thing, right? We got the value here, which is nine. What if you want a different value? What if you want this value, which is three? So the index number for this three is four, right? So this is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. And now if you run this code, you can see we got three. Awesome. Now I have a question for everyone. And this, this time we are, in fact, when I type, let's say six, this is, this is the time we are going to learn something very new today, if you are new to Java. So let's say if I run this code, what will happen? See, what we're, what we're trying to do is, we are trying to fetch the index value, which is 6. And if you look at this array, we don't have the index value 6. We have the last value, index value is 4. We don't have values beyond that. So it will give you a very special message. Okay, so let's, let's run this code and let's see what it gives you. So this is actually very special because this is the first time you are seeing this keyword here, which is called exception. Now, exception is a very important topic. If you are a Java developer or maybe you have done programming before, uh, we normally deal with exceptions and uh, you know, it's a nightmare to solve them. But basically we have an exception and the exception here, it says array index out of bounds exception. In fact, we have a special session completely on exception. So we'll discuss ex what is exception, how, do, how why this cause, and uh, how do we solve it later? As of now, just focus that we got an exception which is called array index out of bound exception. So what we're trying, to, what your compiler is trying to say is, hey, you're trying to access a value which is out of, uh, which is out of the bound, which is beyond the limit. I mean, not the compiler, your runtime basically. Okay, so we got the value, we, we got the error, right? So basically, you have to stay within that. So you, when you say zero. This will, this will work because you are in that range, which is zero and it works, right? Now this is one way of creating the array and this is one way of accessing it. In fact, that's the only way to access it. But then uh, this is one way of creating an array. The second way of creating the array is what if you don't know the values before? I mean, this may actually make sense because uh, when you have the values, you can create an array. But what if you don't know the values? So let's say I will just cut this part and put it here. So I want to insert these values, but at this point, I don't know the values. So there's one more way of creating an array, which is you can directly say, hey, I want to create an array. Uh, you can't simply give a semicolon here. I mean, of course it will work, but then it, you, you, your array is not created. So if you want to create an array, you have to use a new keyword. So basically whenever you deal with the concept of objects, you deal with new keyword. Why? Uh, we'll discuss that once we start with classes and objects. And at this point, just remember, whenever you deal with objects, you, you use new keyword. And as I mentioned before, arrays are not normal types, they are objects. So basically, we use a new keyword. And then you say, so at this point, you can imagine you are trying to allocate memory with the help of new keyword. So we got a new memory, right? But how much memory you want? So that depends upon how much value you want to store. So we are saying, hey, I want an integer array. So each integer will take four bytes, but how many integers How many integers you want? So what is the size of your array? So in this case, uh, first of all, you can't make it dynamic. If you specify the size of the array, you can't, you can't go beyond that, okay? So you have to say int, and you can mention the number, which is five, uh, four. Remember, this is not what you specify the index value. This is what you're specifying the size of the array. So when you say five, you're saying the total number of values we are going to have here is maximum five. Okay. Cool. So now what, so we got this array here, right? And now what do you think? I have not assigned the value, right? So what happens if I try to print, let's say uh, third value or the index number four? Come on, in the chat window, you can answer this. If I try to, if I create an array and if I try to print the value, what it will give me? Okay, so I'm running this code. I hope you have answered. And the answer is zero. Now let's see why we got zero here. It's actually quite interesting to see why we got zero is this. So when we, when we talk about array, and when, then when, when we say this syntax, which is int uh, nums, and then we give a square bracket equal to new int square bracket, and then we specify a size here, right? So let's say I'm specifying a size, which is uh, five. 
Now what happens is the moment you write this line of code, it will create a box for you. The moment you do that, it will create a box. Let's say this is the box. And how many values you can have here? You can have five values. One, two, three, four, five. So we got five values and of course it will also have the index numbers. So let's say index number one, sorry, not one, zero, one, two, three, four. And this will have some by default values. So it will not have a garbage value, it will have some values. So by default, the value for integer variables is zero. So all this box, all these uh, values will be zero by default. So remember this, whenever you create an array, which is blank, by default, the value will be zero. But let's say I don't want to have uh, default values there, I want to have my own value. So what you can do is you can specify those values one by one. So you can say nums of zero, for the first index, the value I want to assign is five. For the second index, I mean the index number one, I want to assign the value which is six. And for the third index, which is the value which is two, let me just take my, yeah. So you can see the value here is uh, what, nine, nums of three is two, and nums of four is three, okay? So this is how you can assign the values. So one way is you can directly assign the value in the curly brackets or you can say this way, and even this works. The moment I say run this code now, it will print two, which is this number. Okay. Yeah, default value of integer is zero, that's right. Yeah, that's how the language is defined, right? Integer value, default value will be zero. Okay, okay, okay. Things are looking good. Okay, so basically this is how you define an array, right? And you can also print it. Now there's one more way of printing all these values. What if you want to get all the values, not just one value? In that case, what you can do is, of course, you can simply say S out and you can mention the index value. So you can say nums of zero. And then you can print nums of one, nums of two. So you can say this is one two, and then you can print all the values, right? This is one way. The another way is you can use a for loop here. Of course, right, when you're doing the same thing repeatedly, we can use a loop. So we can use a for loop and we can use the counter, which is I. Of course, you can have a different name to it, but whenever you say counter, I is something you, which comes to your mind for the first time. And then, you, okay, from where do, you show, where do I start this I value? So by the time you answer that, I hope you have a, Click down that button, like button. So make sure that you hit that like button everyone if you're enjoying this live session. There's a question from Mohammed, or there's a point. How many of you are going to enroll Java full stack course? Say yes, okay. <laughs> yeah, we can do that, right? Say yes if you're going to enroll for the Java full stack course. Okay, so index number will start from zero and then you can say i less than, where should I end it? Should I end it at five or four? So if, if I say less than five, even that works because less than five is actually four. And then we can open this for loop and you can print it here. We can print the value of nums of i. Right, so basically what we are doing is, we are iterating this i loop, it, it, so initially it will go for the value of i will be zero, so it will fetch nums of zero, which is five, then it will fetch nums of one, which is six, then it will, it will fetch nums of two, which is, uh, I mean, of course, whatever value of i is, and it will print all the values. And you can see we got the answer. So we, we are able to print all the values here. It's that simple. 
Okay, uh, Raghunath says today's first prize is actually 8,000. That is right. We are just going beyond the limit, right? So the prize for today is 8,000 rupees. Sorry. Now oh, there's a question. When I want to access this course from Afghanistan, it is asking me to put Indian number, which I don't have. The number is in not accepting the country. Oh, in, that, in this case, do one thing. Send me a mail on Navin Reddy. Uh, sorry, Navin. Oh, what's my email ID? Connect at the .com. So if you want to join this course and if you are not able to buy the course, it's very simple. Send me a mail on connect at the .com. Uh, We will send you the manual link if the automation or the razor payment is not working. And mention the subject as Java full stack course. Okay. Yeah, so what I was sort of saying is, uh, yeah, so basically this is how you can print all the values, right? But what if you want to have a better way so basically, instead of this way, you could, there's a better way here. So in Java, we got this new concept, which is called, not exactly new, but it was introduced later. And the concept name is enhanced for loop. So basically what we are doing is, if you try to understand what we did here, is, is this. So we got this added, right? And we have all these values here. So basically we are using an external loop, which is i, now this i variable actually changes its value from 1, sorry, 0 to 4 and then one by one it is going to the for loop, it is going to the array by saying, hey array, I want the first value. Hey array, I want the second value. Hey array, I want, to go, I want the third value. So what is happening is the for loop is jumping in your, uh, in your array one by one, which is not actually a good way because it will waste a lot of time and plus you may make a lot of mistakes while typing the code. It actually happens with a lot of people. By mistake, what we do is we say equal to five. Again, when we write huge length of code, it normally affects your, uh, your output. And look at this, if you make a small mistake, you get the output, but you also get the exception. And we don't want exception in the code because exception will stop the execution. We don't want it. Right. So what's the best way of handling it? The best way is instead of using the for loop, we can use enhanced for loop. Now how it exactly it looks. So let me come in this part. The enhanced for loop says instead of you come out of, I mean, instead of the I goes to the array and asking the value, what if the array has a power to throw the value one by one? Imagine num says, hey, this is the values. I will give you the values one by one. So here what we can do is we can say for and we can take a value which is num. So what, what, will, what nums is doing is this nums is actually throwing one value at a time and we are putting that in a num variable and we'll give a colon and we say nums. So nums will give you one value at a time which you're going to store in num. And then you can directly print the value which is num. So there's no index value here. There's no, no need to remember how many values you have in the array. Just simply use enhance for loop and this, this works. Let me run this code and you can see there's no exception. So just to reiterate what is happening here is this nums is actually throwing you one value at a time. And that value goes to the num variable here. And now, and you can see we got the output here. Awesome. So this is your indexing and this works. What else we can do here? Yeah, that's right. In fact, there's one more way. If you want to use, I got this comment here, or maybe we'll discuss that later because we have not talked about methods and properties yet. So let's not confuse everyone. Okay, Akshay says, why did it do the exception? It's because we 
are going beyond five, right? So I mean beyond four. The length, the uh, the index number is going till four, and then we are trying to also also fetch fifth one, and that's why we got the error. Yeah, we'll start the mentee. We'll start the we'll resume the uh, quiz in some time. Don't worry. Okay. So this this is how you create an array, and this is how you access it. Now there is a chance that you might want to go for two-dimensional arrays. Now, what, why do we need two-dimensional array? Let me show you something. Okay. So let's say, instead of having one dimension, so basically this is your one-dimensional array, right? Let's say we have uh, four values. We got uh, two, three, one, six. This is your values. But sometimes you want to represent values in multiple boxes. So let's say 5, 16, 12, 1, maybe you have more boxes, 5, 2, 1, 6. So let's say when you have this value, what we're trying to do here is, yeah, that's right, something like a matrix. So we have multiple rows and multiple columns. So here we can use a two-dimensional array. We can say 2D array here. So this is your 2D array. Now the advantage of using this is you can have multiple values in one particular variable. Uh, it may be useful if you want to represent an Excel file, maybe you want to represent a table from database, maybe you want to represent a matrix. So we can use a two-dimensional array. Now how do we use it? Of course, the name of this will be, we can keep it as nums, that's your choice, or maybe you can also say variable name as matrix. But then how will you access it? So since we have two different rows, yeah, that's right, somebody is talking about the uh, Coke storage. So normally for tea, we have one tray, but what if you want to get a carton of uh, Coke bottles? So in this, you can have multiple rows, right? Awesome. Um, so basically, we have multiple rows and multiple columns. So basically, we need to use two different variables to fetch this. Uh, so if you want to represent nums, if you say one square, by, one square box, that's one single dimensional array. So, and I mean, think about this. Don't you think this 2D array is actually a combination of different arrays? So, something like this. This is my first array. This is my second array. This is my third array. So, can I say, so if I say this, okay, let me just say. If I say this thing is actually arrays of numbers. So if I say this is arrays of numbers, can I say this as array of arrays, two-dimensional array. So how do you represent an array of array of array? It's very simple. You say two square bracket. Okay. Yeah, we can say stack of arrays, see when that works. Okay. Now, how do we do that in programming? It's very simple. You go back here, and since we want two dimensional, we can put a square box, square box, and here we can mention the value. So I got three rows and four columns. It's that simple. And how will you assign the values? So whatever value you, you, you have seen in that box which I've drawn, you, you can use the same one. So we can say index of 0, 0, the value. In fact, we, let's reduce it to 3 by 3. Otherwise, I have to type a lot of elements. Maybe I, I'm, I'm lazy. I'll say 3 by 2. So basically, you have three columns, or sorry, three rows and two columns. So three rows, two columns. So when I say three rows and two columns, how exactly it will look like? So it is three rows, three rows and two columns, right? So we can have a box here and this will have three rows, two columns, right? So let's say if the value is five, two, three, four, one, six. That's the value you have. So how do we represent this? This is zero, one, two, zero, one. So if you want this value, which is five, tell me, so five value is what? So if I say 5, 5 is actually 0, 0. If I say this 1, this is actually 2, 0. If I say this is 4, this is 
वन कॉमा वन राइट Yeah, Baba says as exception. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, we can say that. Awesome. So basically, we uh, we can do that here. So this is zero zero comma zero, which is five. Uh, we have then zero comma one. Zero one, which is two. We got one zero. Which is three. We got one, one. So one one is what? It is four. Then we got two zero. Two zero is one. I mean the same value which 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 we have assigned in the box. I'm just using it here. So two one is actually six. Okay, so we got this two-dimensional array, right? But how do you print this array? It's very simple. Uh, we can use a normal for loop first. Let me delete this part. Let's use a normal for loop. The problem with normal for loop is, okay. See, the problem with normal for loop is, if I say, how do I define the size? So what we can do is we can have two sections. We have rows and columns, right? So we can say I have three rows, less than three, and each time you want to access inside element, remember the pattern program which we did? So again, we have to do, we have to say int j is equal to zero and j less than two because we only have two columns and j plus plus. And that's why the pattern program was important because this is what you, you, what you, this is what you learn from there. Okay, there's a question from Anmol. Can we replace the Java uh, second prize with Java cores? Uh, first, we don't have much seats available for Java cores. And second, let's try to win first and then we'll, we can discuss. Okay, so basically we can uh, use this brackets. And then since you want to print this, I can simply remove this uh, print ln and I can print the value of nums of i. And nums of j. In fact, we can also use enhance for loop, which you will which you will be doing by yourself. So try it out. How can you print these values using enhance for loop? And you can see it is printing all the values here. Let's also print some space here so that you can actually see the values. And yeah. You can you got the values, but what if you want to print in a box format which you saw in this image? What if you want three rows and two columns? It's simple. You can just go back to this after this loop. Remember the pattern programs. If you wanted to achieve that, we can use new line. Okay. So again, uh, how do we enhance for loop that you will be doing uh, by yourself? And I'm tired today, don't have much energy. So we'll, let's finish this uh, with this topic and then now it's time for the quiz. Yeah, the remaining topic we'll do tomorrow everyone, don't worry. We'll continue with this. We'll also talk about Jack Daddy and those stuff. So if you got confused, just watch this session once again. And this should make sense. So all set for Menti, everyone. I'm getting back the Menti on the screen. If you still want to join the Menti, you can join. I'm sharing the link in the chat. Okay, Gaurav says in Java course, will you be covering DevOps concept? Yes, we are going to cover the uh, pipeline, CICD pipeline with the help of Amazon uh, AWS Code Star. So I've shared the link in the chat, everyone to join. 
Okay. Chris says, is there any coupon for blockchain course? You can use a link which is mentioned in the chat top. Uh, you will get 10% off for both the courses. So for blockchain as well, the course, the, the coupon is mentioned there. Unmold, right? Yeah, I've given the reply. Uh, Bhaskar at least will be coming later once we start with the concept of uh, uh, collection. We'll talk about that. Okay, so let's start the Mentimeter. Let's resume the Mentimeter. This is our leaderboard. And now, again, if you want to join Mentimeter, just copy that link and you can join. So now, let's start with the Menti. Okay, so the fifth question coming on your screen, everyone. I hope you're still on Menti. So fifth question. And here we go. Okay, which type of loop is guaranteed to have the body execute at least once? So even if the condition is wrong, which one, which loop will run? Is it do while, for loop, for each loop, while loop? Do while loop, that is correct. Because in do while loop, first we execute the block, then we check for the conditions. Sensor? Heating. Just speed up the fan once. Okay, sixth question everyone coming on your screen and here we go. Okay, what would be the output of the following code snippet? This should be simple. Okay, and yeah, I was expecting this mix mix up. <laughs> okay, so if you see the code once again, it is the value of A is 10 and 10 is not less than zero, right? So the value is only three. I know that was confusing. Sanjay says, want to learn Java, Spring, Spring Boot, Microservices, React in live class. Is there any plan for live class session? Yeah, Sanjay, you can join the course, which is mentioned on the link. So use a pinned, look at the pinned link. Uh, the, I'm coming up with Java live course, full stack Java, Java course. We don't have front end in it, but then it has the entire Java stack. Oh, camera is off. Okay, so ignore them. I, I know you can't see my face because the camera is dead. Ignore that. So let's go with the next question, everyone. Okay, so now we have a leaderboard. So here we go. There is a tough competition between Raja Varun, Shalini, Anmol, Prachi Agrawal, Adarsh. Okay, Anmol is in top three. That's why Anmol was asking for the prize. Okay, <laughs> now I got the point. Uh, yeah, we'll look at this, Anmol. If you win, uh, if you can, well, let's discuss. If, if, if I can give you. Okay. Yeah, something went wrong there. I lost my internet connection in between.
Okay, how many questions we have? We have, I guess we have two more questions, and here we go. All variables and methods in Java language kept inside. Okay, so majority of you are saying class and that is correct. Now let's go for the next question. Eighth question everyone coming on your screen. Okay, what is the output of the following code? Come on. So take your time, think about it, and then answer. Okay, so not everyone was able to answer this. I know it, it's a tricky question, but the answer is five. Now, if you observe closely, I guess the statement is written outside the for loop. Let me just show you the question once again. Oh, I can't show you the question. But yeah, the, the for loop, the printing was done outside the for loop. And that's why the answer is five. Okay, now with this, let's see the leaderboard. Let's see who is on top three. So if you are in top three, please send your screenshot on my LinkedIn uh, not my LinkedIn, uh, on my Instagram account. Okay, so Shalini is the first winner. Congratulations, Shalini. We can have a virtual clap there. And Varun, uh, Raja Varun is second, and Anmol, you came third. Okay, great. Cong congrats. And Prachi, so close. So close for the courses. No issue. So, Shalini, congratulations for two courses the Java course and the blockchain course. So what you have to do is if you want to get these two courses, you have to make sure that first you go to the dashboard and register yourself on Aniron and send me the email ID which is registered there. Just make a registration for your account and share your email ID on my uh, Instagram account. We'll give you the access by tomorrow. Uh, Raja Varun, again, same thing. Register yourself on Aniron. You can use a link in description which, is, which says dashboard link and register yourself and share your email ID. I will give you the access for the blockchain course. And Anmol, uh, I will, so again, take a screenshot, send me on Instagram, I will send you the manual link for the 50% off discount on uh, Java course. So yeah, that's it from this live. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, again, I have not received, maybe you can send it later. Take a proper sh screenshot and send it. Okay, there's a question from Shrikant. I'm already placed in a company. Will it be useful for me because my project is also based on Spring? And that's the idea, right? Now, this course is actually for everyone. Doesn't matter are you a student or uh, uh, or you're working for a company? Because most of the companies they are using Spring framework, and the entire curriculum is designed so that you, you can use it in your project. So, yeah, that's it, everyone. Thanks for being here. See you tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow we have a different topic. In fact, everyone, you know, in top ten, if you want to enjoy my blockchain course, let me know in the Instagram. Share your screenshot. Let me see if I can get you some good good discounts. And see you tomorrow, seven p.m. again. Bye, bye, everyone.